Uh, this is Andy Cotterell with MMA.ca here in Halifax, Nova Scotia, and a victorious Jesse Gross. Jesse Gross also in a very good mood. Uh, victorious tonight over Tristan Johnson in the co-main event of Extreme Cage Combat. Congratulations, Jesse. Oh, thank you very much. I actually uh, got a little more support out here than I thought. I, was, I thought I was going to get booed right out of the arena, but it wasn't too bad out here. You had a pretty good support system here. Did a lot of people come down from Ontario, or you just know people out here, or what? No, I, I was very, very shocked. Um, I, I met a few people I was out here. I mean, not a hard guy to get along with outside side of the cage you close the door and put yourself in front of me and a contract and uh, money between us and you got a different problem but outside of the cage no I made a few friends and uh, ended up with a little bit of a cheering section it was nice yeah it was nice for sure uh, something else that was nice was your performance tonight uh, pretty dominant performance overall throughout the night against Tristan Johnson first two rounds uh, you dominated pretty much the whole thing you're in control third round he showed a little bit of uh, pep and gusto and he had a couple positive moments uh, it looked like toward the end it was hard to see where I was sitting but right at the very end of the third round did he have an armbar there? Yeah, he sprung for an armbar. There was uh, his, uh, 20 seconds left in the fight, and he just just threw it up for you know a hell mary, and and he actually he, he caught the arm or whatever, but he couldn't turn anywhere because we were against the fence. So I just grabbed the arm, and I was just like, I knew there was, I knew exactly how much time was left, and then the clackers went, and I was just like. All right, any time, and then finally the horn went, but it felt for a long time. But no, it it wasn't gonna go. Uh, if it was in the middle of the round, I would I would have had to make a move to get out, but. But no, with that short of time where we were positioned, I was, I was safe. Uh, we spoke last night at the weigh-ins, and you were very confident in your abilities, very confident in your game plan going against Tristan. Was there anything out of the ordinary, anything unexpected that happened tonight? No, like, uh, like, a, like exactly like I thought. I was like, you know, uh, I've seen a lot of guys fight him and a lot of guys that have uh, attacked a takedown on him. Uh, they do get it. Uh, I, everyone kept saying, you know, he's well-rounded, but I was like, man, he doesn't stuff t takedowns all that well. Even the guys that uh, ain't as strong as me and ain't even close to athletic as I am uh, do manage to get him down at some point, and I was just like, okay, I'm pretty sure I can handle that pretty easy. Uh, so so I, I wasn't very surprised. That it, was, it was very easy to get him down, and then once I did at 45, man, I'm just, just too strong. Uh, I, I've trained with Mark Hominick forever, Who's, who's always been the top guy in Canada at 145, and, and I managed to hold him down quite handily a lot of times and uh, do, do, do quite well training with him, obviously. Uh, so, so coming into this weight class where he's been the kingpin forever, I'm like, man, I I if I can hang in there with Mark, I, I feel pretty confident with anybody outside of that. So, so Mark's uh, helped me prepare and give, give me that mental confidence that I need uh, to step into this weight class and feel confident against anybody. Uh, after the fight uh, was over, you were in the cage, you were given a microphone and you addressed the crowd. Could you repeat what you told them here? Uh, well, I've been trying to get out here to fight forever, absolutely ever. I've been begging for a fight on the East Coast because everyone says how nice it is to party out here and the people are awesome. So, so, so I was trying to get on, you know... Get, I'm trying to get somebody to help me out here. I got, I got myself. I got Chris Clements, you know, UFC fighter out here. We're here for one night. Let's, let's go have some fun. Everybody yeah. says you guys know what's up. Show, show me what's up. Show, I want to have a good time out here and go back home and make sure the rumors are true. You can uh, go for a donair tonight now, now that the fight's over. Yeah, everybody keeps telling me that's the thing to have, and it's uh, supposed to be sweet as hell, and they're supposed to be really big, so got to find out what the hype's about. Uh, we're already on it. Uh, apparently, we're staying. We were at the Travel Lodge, which is right beside the best place uh, for donairs, I'm told. I can't remember what the name of the place Robert is. Robert Stoneairs? Robert Stoneairs, so we'll be coming. Robert? Hook us up, bud. So, uh, second last question. Uh, last thing that happened to you in the cage was that you did a face-off against local fighter Gavin Tucker. He's seven and zero. He's really uh, he, he's a good fighter as well. So, is that a fight you'd like to see happen? Yeah, absolute can crusher. Uh, he's beat a bunch of bums, and uh, now he thinks he's tough. So, uh, I'm not impressed with that guy one bit. Uh, I'm sh I'm sure he does have some decent skills, man. But he's got to fight somebody to impress me. Uh, uh, you just look at these 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 guys he's fought. He's fought nobody even close to my level, and uh, yeah, I, I'd be I'd be willing to tee off on him. I got no problem against that. But uh, some things some things we might need to talk about before we come back out here. There's a lot of uh, a lot of running around, a lot of hustle that we had to do that we we shouldn't have had to do. Uh, issues with you know uh, like the scale and where we're placed. We're placed way the hell across town, and then we're driving into town like. Just a lot of things were a lot of a, uh, a scramble, so we got to fix <laughs> fix a few glitches. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not trying to be a prima donna, but some things were just uh, really lackluster for a guy that's being brought in out of town. Like they want to fly me in the morning of the weigh-in, and, and we had to absolutely argue with them to come in the night before. And then they're like, "Okay, well, 
we'll fly you the night before, but now now we're not paying for your hotel. You have to pay for your own hotel. hotel. And it's like, oh, my God. So just some things we're going to have to clean up if we're coming back. But, you know, opponent-wise, yeah, not, not, a, not a damn problem there. So, Well, other than those, uh, you know, a couple small things, how was your overall experience here in Halifax? Halifax has been good so far. So far, so good. Um, you know, now, now everything's done, right? The weight cut's done. The fight's done. The hard work's over. Uh, it's been probably about three months since I've had a beer. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's go get messy here in Halifax, man. Let's have some fun. Nice. And now the last thing, we're going to open up the floor to you. Is there anybody you'd like to thank? Yeah, uh, a lot of guys back at ATC uh, helped me out, obviously, always going to help me out. But uh, the thing is, is a lot of guys didn't have fights coming up, so I had to rely on the amateurs at uh, ATC uh, to really come in and gang up and beat me up. And uh, so guys like Ryan Thompson... Uh, Tommy and uh, Tanner uh, really came at me and, and, and basically carried a lot of my camp more than the professionals because they didn't have fights. They're not working out as hard right now. Uh, as well as uh, Show No Love stepped up, uh, gave me a t-shirt sponsored like three days ago because I had nothing because nobody's going to see this fight or nothing. There's no live feed on it. So thanks to them for stepping up, my only sponsor. Uh, the king, Dr. Faisal Raymond. If it wasn't for him, man. I don't know if I'd be able to get cleared, man. That guy makes the world go around, so good for him. A um, thing that gets overlooked is my jobs. Uh, I have three jobs, which is three jobs, and three jobs has a lot of bosses, and they all work with my schedule and you know work around so I can get training time. So thanks to them, as uh, Spray and Seal Jacks and Foam 911. Uh, my corner, thanks to them. Uh, Jesse Ronson, big star back in Ontario, he pretty much put my whole game plan together and, you know, tightened me up and uh, showed me a lot of wrestling stuff that I used tonight, so big thanks to him. Um, happy birthday to my boy Logan, and uh, ha happy Mother's Day to Mom, and uh, put me in the top five Canada, man. That's where I want to be, and uh, bring, me, bring me someone else. Let's do this. Right on. Well, Jesse, you look really great in the cage tonight. Uh, I was excited to finally see you fight live. Congratulations, and hopefully we'll see you back out here again. Oh, thanks a lot. Thanks, and uh, we'll... Like I said, we'll fix some glitches. We'll get back out here and get after it. Right on. This is uh, Andy Cotterell with MA.ca here and Jesse the Ghost Gross in Halifax, Nova Scotia.